Chapter 3, Section 15. Our last section here is on fatty acids and lipids. Now, remember, fatty acids, okay, they have a backbone. The microbial lipids here, okay, they're going to be slightly different. Archaea do not contain fatty acids. They have some what they refer to as hydrophobic isoprenoids, okay? So they're not going to have the glycerol and the fatty acid tails like we've seen before. So for those of us with the fatty acids that are going to be the phospholipids or the triglycerides or whatever, we see that this biosynthesis is going to be two carbons at a time. There's going to be what is referred to as an acyl carrier protein, ACP, that's going to hold this fatty acid during the synthesis. So it's holding on to it, positioning it, so that two by two by two by two, two acetyl groups are going to be added Our two acetyls actually are going to come from, and we're going to see here in this example of fatty acid biosynthesis, come from the three carbon molecule known as malinate. That third carbon, since we're only using the two C2 acetyl to build two by two by two by two, that third carbon is going to be released as carbon dioxide. So we have acetyl ACP, one, two, two carbons, and malonyl, one, two, three. ACP is released here from acetyl ACP, because remember the ACP is just holding, it's positioning everything, and then boom, we now have, we're releasing carbon, we now have one, two, three, four carbons. going to oxidize NADPH. So now we have only one carbonyl group here at the carbon attached to the ACP holder. And then we're just going to keep repeating this process over and over again. Three get added, one get in the process, one gets released. So we go from four to six, six to eight, eight to ten, two by two by two. And before you know it, you're at 16 known as palmitate. Then you have to take into account the whole idea of saturated, unsaturated, branched, or just what the length is going to be. All of this varies. Organism to organism, species to species. Different species have different environments they live in. Different environments means, you know, different temperatures, different salinities, different this, different that. <clears throat> we see that most bacteria are only going to have between 12 and 20 carbons. You know, the saturated versus unsaturated. Well, unsaturated, lower temps, things that like to grow in lower temps. You know, refrigerator temperatures, freezer temperatures in certain environments that are cold, cold water, near freezing. Why unsaturated? Because remember, that means the fatty acid chains on their phospholipids are going to be bent. That means in a given area, there's going to be fewer phospholipids, which means they have more room to move, especially when temperatures drop and things get more sluggish, they can still move and you can still maintain that fluid dynamic or that fluid mosaic, sorry. Higher temps, it's going to be saturated so they can pack in a little more. Higher temps, you know, higher temps means more thermal energy, means those phospholipids are going to want to move and vibrate too fast. So you want to pack them in so that they can hinder movement of each other, slow that movement down, maintain the fluid of the fluid mosaic within a certain range. Whether you're talking bacteria or us eukaryotes, it all starts with glycerol. You start with glycerol, okay? Remember glycerol, take three fatty acids, 
you now have triglycerides. You remove one of those fatty acids and you add on a phosphate group, you now have a phospholipid. You can, instead of phospholipid, you could add a sugar. You could add ethanolamine. You can add and you can add and you can make many different things. Archae, it's going to be different. The lipids are going to be based on, are going to come from isoprene. You're going to have a glycerol. But remember, instead of short, you know, 10 to 20 or 12 to 20 carbons, this is going to be, you know, forming a lipid bilayer. This is going to be long chains that are formed that monolayer. You're going to see that in some of the archaea, many of the archaea. So their membranes are going to be quite a bit different. They're going to be shaped differently. They're going to have slightly different functions.